Yeah, you're right. Welcome back, muchachos. I love this area that I'm in. It's very weird. I'm along the Mississippi River at an anchorage. Up in here, all this right here is up in here because of the river when it was last up. Well, I would say the river brought that up in here. Oh, look, there's a shoe. Have you ever heard stories of the One Shoe Bandit? Travels all around the world, but particularly likes to fish the river down here. Actually, you can find evidence of the One Shoe Bandit from the top to the bottom of the river. Did I say the Banda? The One Shoe Banda is actually a panda. The One Shoe Bandit Panda. Yeah, you're right. Somebody dropped some raisins. I'll have to remember where those raisins are because we have a guest that is supposed to, supposed to show up and fish with us. Supposed to. Yeah, look, I found these on the ground. Have you ever heard the song Big Rock Candy Mountain? It would make make this place up in the mountains just sound phenomenal, right? Like it's made of candy and whiskey's coming out of the ground everywhere. Stuff like that. Did they have a line about a river of butterscotch coming through the land? It would be fitting for today because it still looks like butterscotch. And maybe a week's time it might not because it is dropping and it's going to stabilize. It's around seven something right now and it, it's dropping. It's gonna come down to six. It's gonna take it a couple days more to do that. And we got the NM cherry blossom across the way. Yeah, you're right. So this is early afternoon. It's nice and warm, but it wasn't throughout the night. What am I showing you? There's a headpiece. Let's get that sun out of my eyes. So I got a body piece, a head piece, six aughts. My leader line is 50 pound test mono. My lead on both of these rods is four ounces. Sinker slides, right? And then my main line is 80. And my rods are 10 foot Daiwa beef sticks with pin bait runners. Like I said before, this is an anchorage. And at this particular spot, when the river is coming up or going down, the current is strong. And then it is could be, this current could be described at just any given time as strong, but it is stronger when the river is dropping or coming up. So we're probably gonna put this straight out in front of me and watch it go whoop over that way. But that's fine until it's not, right? I mean, sometimes it's not, but that's just what's gonna happen for this particular bait. We don't need to throw up river with both of them. Just one up river and one straight out in front of me to where they never come in contact with each other. They're always a good distance from each other because you don't want them too close. So many problems could happen when you're bringing something in. Spaghetti is what I would call it. A nice entanglement. And we want to avoid, we want to avoid entanglements we also want to avoid casting with the bail closed gotta open that all right come on there you go the river temperature here in front of me in my area right according to the carnarvon gauge 59 degrees still it needs it's somewhere kind of okay but it needs to go a little over 60 for a few days and then i bet you anything that will kick it off but it's not out of the question catching today this afternoon like i said it's early afternoon i'm just gonna chill i've yet to make the second cast i'm just kind of watching this hopefully i'm not making a mistake I've fished this spot many, many times, and this is what I expect. The reason why I'm letting it go over there, even though I know I could hit a snag, is because 
Usually when I have a bait over there, really far to the right, so many times I've picked up a massive fish letting it go over there because we're in deeper water. This is the, I fish different spots along here in this anchorage and this one is one of the deeper spots. All right, I think we're stable. I cut this down when I got here, you see? I brought out the machete and I trimmed it a little bit because it was a little bit in my way. <laughs> it was massively in my way, actually. Yeah, this one's gonna go up river a bit. So when it drifts, it'll stop way before it starts to go sharply to the right. That's decent. I just checked the time, it is 5.02. I don't know if our buddy, our compadre, he's on his way or even gonna show up, he says, after a while. I guess just in case, right? You never know, he might show up. You didn't get lost after all. I wish I could have drove over there. It would have been a lot easier. What? Well, huh? You're not supposed to drive over the levee. Oh, yeah, but. Been a lot Craig's easier. not used to having to walk half a block. <coughs> you can do it. He was scared to cast between my rods. You can get a little closer to the river. I'm Make good. sure you have a good, good footing. I'm good. I want to pull in. We got to get way back. Go get it. Got it. Let, give it a give it a chance. Give it a chance. Let him let him get to know your bait. Don't react yet. Just he's just plucking on that string. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one, man. He's almost ready. Just play it with it right Yeah. Wait till he, he starts to take that rod tip down a little bit. Yeah. That might just be a little fish too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it could be a crab, you think? No, it's not a crab. Craig rocked up thinking that if he brought shrimp, we would have got redfish or a bull shark or tuna or something. <laughs> and I was like, no, not. it's too early. The river's just fresh water and cold. Stuff like that doesn't come up into the river until the river's green looking and it's hot and low. The river's gotta be low, hot and green for it to have all those things like gaff top, bull shark, redfish. Yeah, see if he's there. He's starting to ramp that tension up. You can't get it out of the hole. I thought it maybe you could, your problem would be you couldn't get it in the hole, but you can't get it out either. All right, now now we're playing freeze frame. Well, I gotta wait for the bite again. Yeah, but he, you could have had a hook up already. I don't know, just give it a second. It put him off, all that fumbling around, trying to get it out. Yeah. You gotta act like you know what you're doing and then they'll respect you. There you go. Yeah, I got him. All right. Ain't too big, it don't feel 
type it. Yeah, don't play too bad. Right here somewhere, I think. So I'm just staying right here. Keep fighting them, keep bringing them up. Yep. Craig hasn't fished the river in oh, ages. Don't just don't horse them. You're in you're in that. There's a bit of rip rap there, rocks and stuff. Yeah, I'm stuck on something. Just, just wait. Just wait. Just wait it out. Alright. Give it a few seconds. It's because you were bringing them in really slow there. At some point, you need to get them up. I should have told you. I'm sorry. It's my fault. I should have told you that at this angle out, out of that position there, you don't want that fish to control you. That's for you, Dustin. Don't let that fish control you. You can't let the fish like stay low. You got to bring them up in the column to get them over stuff because you, it's the drop off that you're up against. I felt the pull just now. Yeah. See if you can get them to come up. It. It's always difficult when your fish smacks up against a drop off and sometimes the drop off can be like a bit of an overhang and that fish He still have it. What pound test is that? 80. 80. Got him. Is he coming up? No. I don't know if I'll give him that. You will. You gotta be patient. <laughs> Is he taking line? I'm, I'm trying to have taking a little line, but... Nope. You want me to try? Yeah, you can if you want. Yeah, we need to give him time. So what we're going yeah. to do is back up out of the way, Craig, yep. so I can uh, feed it. Get, get this back, open the bale, let some line out. Yeah, and then swim out a little bit. He's still there. Yeah, he's there. When he does that, you need to be him. quick and pick it up and see if you can get him. So hold the rod, I guess. Or do you want me to take over and do yeah, it? Try. Want me to try? Yeah. Craig is always like, when I when I ask, do you want me to try? He's like, really fast. Yes, yes. <laughs> now see that get caught up. What it is? This bottom part here getting caught up. Your butt's too fat. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? It's like a knob right there. Your butt's yeah. more like a knob. You look at the knob end. <laughs> it's getting caught on a lot of That knob's too big for you. <laughs> All right. We've, he finally, I didn't have to take over. I don't like taking over. I like people being able to, but sometimes you gotta, Here it comes. you gotta show people and then you hand the rod back to them and let them do it. Here it comes, a small one, but... Yeah, you're right. Oh, boy, yeah, I guess. No, that's a channel. Yeah. Ain't a bad channel, Cat, then. No, it's not big. Ain't too bad. What channel, Cat? All that fuss just for a little channel, Cat. Yeah. Yeah, it's small. Yeah, a spider on my dead, too. Where is it? Spider, well, he went on a run. The spider's on the rock? Yeah. Is that like code for something? <laughs> All right, Craig does not want to keep this, and I prefer to keep my own fish, not someone else's. Nice channel cat. There he goes. Craig asked me how you, you tell the water temperature. And I told yeah. him with a thermometer. <laughs> and he asked me, you just put a thermometer in the water? <laughs> no. It's a lot easier than that. <laughs> the closest gauge to us Carrollton? is no. Not Carrollton. Carrollton is just water stage, just measurement. No. There's not a they don't have a, a gauge up there for that kind of data for water temperature. Yeah. There's two of them. The closest one is Carnarvon, 
Okay. Which is just right up the river from us. Yeah. And then Baton Rouge. Okay. So if you Google, there's a website you could go to, but you could also get it by Googling Mississippi River water temperatures at New Orleans. Mm. And it'll pull data. Google will pull data off of that instrument that is up at Carnarvon, which is just right above us not far at all yeah just above the english turn mark on the river yeah all right for a quick moment i am slightly distracted so watch the rods craig yeah, yeah. a friend of mine in tennessee is texting me about hobo shoestring who went missing at this point i think it was over two weeks ago he walked out of the hospital disoriented left everything behind at his house so he's not on the rails he's not out shooting a video or somewhere his phones his gear everything left at the house so they're doing a search and it's not looking great people hmm. all right muchachos definitely a one fish video because there was only one fish <laughs> yeah you're right so craig here wants to thank y'all Thanks for the donations. We still need more. But we're getting there. It's to help raise funds for the cost of the funeral for his dad, who passed away recently. We're getting there. Mucho gracias to all y'all that have already donated. There is a link down in the description if you would like to. If you don't, that's fine as well. You can donate to it and tell us your name in a message or you can remain anonymous thank you nonetheless and we are going to get out of here so thank you for watching liking sharing commenting subscribing being a member of the channel and i will see you next time